Y'all are here for a studio tour. Let's get right into it. All right, y'all, what up? It's your man, Chill Smith, back with another tour of Chillville Studio, updated version. Let's get right into it. So this time, I'm gonna start with, I would say, the, the seating area. So before, I had two of these seats, and now I have a futon. Behind the futon, I have some, I have a LED lamp. I forget the, the name brand of these. They're not Govi. I do have Govi. Um, behind the desk we'll get to it but these um i want to say it costs about 45 dollars off amazon i'll leave a link in case you guys want to you know cop a pair and up here i have a good vibes neon light on to this acoustic treatment right here this is made by gik they have different patterns different colors this um, wood piece is supposed to act as diffusion and then behind here is absorption so this piece of acoustic treatment I bought off Sweetwater I think it came in an eight piece I'll show you the other pieces it also included this in the kit so this panel right here is custom I forget the name of the company I got it from but it is four by six and of course you know I got my man Nas up there my favorite rapper of all time Above the desk, I have this acoustic cloud. I have it to kind of like absorb the sounds on the ceiling, of course, that bounce off the desk. It's um, it's 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 uh, kind of over the desk. It's mainly over me when I'm sitting down. I also have these panels to break up the sound that hits the ceiling. These are diffusers. Does it work? Is it doing anything? I hope so. In here. On this side of the studio, I have blackout curtains to absorb, absorb some of the sound. I doubled up on these or two. This covers the door. Oh, and here's the foam, <laughs> the foam pieces that I'm using. It's on the door, covered up. I just kind of just do it on there, just throw it on there, just for shits and giggles. But this is actually tripled up and on this side I have two of these and I have some hooks here behind here to hang up uh, like my coat when it's uh, you know when it's cold out and I have this caution tape here for people who are tall if you're above like six feet yeah you're gonna hit your head on it I'm gonna start the gear section with the microphone that I use this is an AKG C414 XL2. A little bit of a story behind this. I was actually looking at the TLM by Neumann, uh, which is, you know, it's around the same price. The, the TLM 103 I was looking at. And I was, I was heavily considering it, but it did not come with a shock mount, which deterred me from getting it. Because if I'm paying that much, just throw me a, a shock mount. Like this is, a plastic shock mount does the job and I just recently um, kind of switched to this type of pop filter because um the cloth one like absorbed a lot of smells and it wasn't as easy to clean as this this one's way easier to clean and so you know I switched to this I also upgraded my mic stand this is by I'm gonna say framework it's um it's more sturdier than the one I had before. Here I have a Pod Mic by Rode. That's the name of it, Pod Mic. And I have a fat head on here to boost the signal. So for the cost of this, this mic, around $100, does the job, sounds good to me. Um, this thing is heavy. Like if you hit somebody with this, KO, solid mic. It, feel, it feels more expensive than what it is. But if you do get this mic, I highly suggest getting this fat head. They also have um, a cloud lifter, but I didn't like how the cloud lifter looked. I like how this looks more, it's like more streamlined, uh, less noticeable. And um, it gets the job done because without this, 
I had like the preamp blasting. Like it was really high, uh, probably at like 85, 90% to get like a good signal out of it. So yeah, highly suggest getting the FET head. If you like what you're seeing, please like the video and subscribe. And it's also connected to this Rode boom arm. This is the first and only boom arm like this that I've owned. I've wanted one of these for like a long time. Um, so I, I don't really have anything to compare it to, but it it's where I put it, it stays. It doesn't, it's pretty solid to me. I have, I have no complaints about it. Also, you know, I do podcasts every Friday night. Awesome talk. Check us out. I'm going to put a link in the description. I have this LED. I guess you'd call this a, a fail light. Also use this, you know, when I'm doing the podcast. It's connected to a mic stand and, uh, you know, rechargeable battery. Oh, it's on there. So rechargeable batteries there. You know, I'll hit the button. Let you see how it works. Yeah, so... You can adjust this bright. It's a very inexpensive um, LED actually. And then, um, you know, it does what I need it to do. This Logitech is what I use for podcasts. Like I said, check us out. Awesome talk every Friday night at 930. You know what I mean? I'm gonna leave a link. Friday nights, 930 on Twitch. Shit. So let's get to the juicy stuff. On the left side of my rack, I have a power conditioner by Furman. This is the Furman M80X. Under that, I have a compressor by DBX. This is DBX160A. I only really record vocals and this gets the job done. I bought this, I wanna say off eBay. I bought it used for less than $200. And under the DBX, I have a preamp by Warm Audio. This is the Warm Audio WA73. This is a clone of a Neve preamp. That is, a, you know, it's very expensive. It's in the thousands of dollars. And this, I want to say, costs between $600 and $800. I've seen this in professional studios, so hey, you know what I mean? If the super pros are using it, it must be good. And I have to say, sounds good to me. They also sell one with the EQ, but I don't EQ on the way in, except for like, I got a high pass filter on here, um, taking out like 50 Hertz, cause you don't need 50 Hertz on vocals. Like I'll EQ that any, out anyway, so might as well record it without that. And under the Warm Audio WA73, I have my audio interface by Focusrite. This is the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. So this has all the ins and outs I need for the signal flow I want. It has enough ins and outs for the outboard gear that I have on the other side of the desk. I have the pod mic hooked into input one. I don't necessarily like it like this, but when we do the podcast, we use Skype and Skype doesn't allow you to change the input. So it just, it defaults in the first input. And there's like this whole other process to where you can use a different input. But uh, to me, the, the, it wasn't worth it. Just plug it in the hand, and just keep it pushing. Further down the line, I do plan on replacing this Scarlett interface with the Apollo. Is it necessary for me to do it? Not really, because this does everything that I need it to do. But the Apollo has a little bit more headroom and the plugins that it come with are phenomenal. So here I have another power conditioner. Um, the other power conditioner had the volt reader, as you saw, and it also had these um, these lights I replaced the lights on here because the the lights that it, the light bulbs that it came with they weren't really that good I'll be honest so these are LEDs and it's dimmable you can dim it you can make it brighter you can make it dimmer it's a cool little touch so down here is the Clark Technic or Technique I've heard people say it both ways so I'm just gonna say it both ways the Clark Technic or Clark Technique 2A 
KT leveling amplifier. Uh, I just got this about two days ago. I played around with it. It sounds cool. I don't have extensive experience with it, but this is the first optical tube compressor I have ever owned. So this is a clone of the LA-2A, which is very expensive, a couple thousand dollars. This costs about $400. I use it as an insert um, in Pro Tools because I'm a Pro Tools user. This right here, you adjust this. The higher this number is, the more it compresses. And this is the output gain to kind of make up for the compression. Um, I mean, I played around with it and I wouldn't keep it. For, for my vocal chain, um, I probably wouldn't put this above 10 because I'm already compressing with the DBX and it, you know, gets pretty loud. And also, I wanna say, man, it looks beautiful to me. I like, I just like the way it looks. And under here, I have the Chameleon Labs 7721 VCA bus compressor. So, I put this on, this is, I also use this as an insert. I put this on my auxiliary when I bus vocals. So, in Pro Tools, I'll bus the vocals to an auxiliary and then put this on the insert of the auxiliary. This is, um, it's just a clean signal. Honestly, it doesn't, as far as I can tell, it doesn't really saturate anything. Unlike this, this does saturate the signal that goes in. It makes it, uh, this makes it heavier, makes it fuller, if I was to describe it. This kind of just lifts it and brings clarity. I bought this, like when it was fairly new, it cost $800 when I bought it. But um, now I wanna say it costs about 1,500. So <laughs> your boy caught on to it early. So listen, I finally upgraded my computer. It, it was much needed. My computer that I had before was a 2011 iMac. This is a Mac mini with the M1 chip, 16 gig. I think it's like the 512 or whatever. Um, of storage. I didn't need, need that much because, you know, right here I have a external hard drive by Glips. Uh, this is a six terabyte hard drive. And, um, you know, I'm gonna have this for a long time. I was thinking about getting a new one with the uh, the Type-C connection, but um, that'll be further down the line. I'm not in a rush to, to get a new one with that. But yeah, so this, this computer, um, I mean, in comparison to the computer I was just using, is substantially better uh, as of right now I have no complaints everything works and it does a job so shout out to Apple for making the Mac mini with the M1 chip oh and on the bottom if you're curious it's um, a USB hub that uh, it looks like it's connected to the Mac mini but it is not if I lift the Mac mini let me try to lift it I'm doing this my son needs. Well, you know, you're gonna have to take my word for it. But yeah, that's a USB hub. For the most part, matches the color. It's a little, little bit off, but I don't think people are gonna notice. And if they notice, who cares? All right, so now we can talk about the monitors I have. So here I have a Asus. I think that's how you say it. Um, the exact monitor I have. I don't know, man. I don't know the name of it, but I'll, I'll put it in the description. It wasn't that expensive. Uh, looks good. Does what I needed to do. And I want to say it's 21 inches, maybe. I'll put it. I'll put it in the description. And up here, I have a bigger TV than I had before. Before I had a 50 inch. This is I want to say 60 inches. This. Here I have the KRK. Rocket 5. These are the oldest monitors, studio monitors I have. This was a gift from my father. Um, so I would never get rid of these. But I, I don't use these a lot. I kind of use them, you know, to A, B a mix and just for fun. Sometimes I throw them on. And the main monitors I mix with are the Atom Audio T8Vs. Quick story on these. I was actually looking at the uh, Yamaha HS8s and I made a tweet 
um, asking the people on Twitter, which one should I get? Even though I was I was mainly leaning towards the Yamahas, but I, I tagged Yamaha and I tagged Adam Audio in a tweet and um, Adam Audio responded. So that made me get these. If I do upgrade, I'm probably gonna stick with Adam Audio. I like the way they look. This tweeter looks gorgeous. If I do upgrade uh, my speakers, which I do plan on doing, I'll probably get the Adam Audio A7V. And right here, I have um, the Behringer Monitor 2 USB. I use these to control my speaker volume. These have um, headphone amplifiers in here. I can switch sources. Um, I can switch speakers. So um, source one is my focus right. Source two is my other focus right. So I have this set up for when people come over with their laptop and they wanna you know, like mix the beats, they can hook up to this audio interface and play it through you know, the speakers the same way. I can play my setup through the speakers. On this desk, I have a hook for my headphones. These are the Sony MDR 7506. These are my second pair that I had. The other ones I had, um, super old. I ended up giving them away to somebody that needed it. But I use these while recording. And for recording, while recording, this is for the artists. These are the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. These are the 250 ohm. And here I have a record player by Audio Technica. It's a great investment if you're into sampling hip hop with records. I do wanna warn people that are interested in this record player so you need a computer and you need a daw to play records off of here there's no separate speakers and as far as i know there isn't a way to just add speakers and play it so you're gonna need a daw and a computer for this record player and for anybody wondering about the lights behind the desk. Now these are LEDs by Govi. They do all types of patterns um, that I control on my cell phone. So they look cool. And to kind of wrap things up, this is where I keep my microphones. I uh, don't enjoy this. <laughs> I want to find a better way to stash, stash my microphones. Because this is, sometimes it gets in the way of my legs. And it, uh, eh, it doesn't look that great, to be honest. I mean, it looks okay. It doesn't look horrible. But if anybody has any suggestions on, like, a, a storage for microphones, please tell me. I would, I would appreciate the advice. So this has been my tour of Chillville Studio for 2023. If you're one of the goats that watched this to the end, put Chillville in the comments. And if you want more content like this, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next video. Peace.